Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. You can find us at parkbenchtutors.com or you can look for us on Facebook. Just look for Parkbench Tutors. We're going to look at methods of costing and we're going to consider transfers and joint products and byproducts. Transfers are what happens when you get a product which passes through distinct stages. So, for example, you can separate off production of parts, assembly of parts, and painting of the products. Then you can treat those as being three separate stages. So, when you do that, any movement between the stages involves transfer of an item that's 100% complete. So, if it comes to the next stage is 100% complete, then there's no work in progress passed between the stages. Opening work in progress, remember, means that units are incomplete at the start of the period, whereas a transfer refers to the units that are 100% complete from the previous process. So, what happens if there's more than one product? How do we uh, apportion the costs between the products? Well, the answer is that we look for a point at which the products can be identified as separate products, and we then look at the costs that have been incurred before that point, and they're called the pre-separation costs, or otherwise known as joint product costs. And those are the costs that then get apportioned over the different products. A good example of this would be a refinery which has crude oil, which comes in, and the crude oil is then distilled into other products, which can include gasoline, kerosene, and fuel oil. So the cost of distilling the crude oil becomes a joint cost, and then various products can be further processed. And the further processing is such that gasoline can be blended and treated so it can be used in automobile engines, jet fuel is blended and has additives to control viscosity and freezing point, and diesel is also processed to control viscosity and also sulfur levels. Each product has a significant sales value, right? and each product is a joint product. So let's just go over that again. Up to the split-off point, right, you have a joint process which involves costs for crude oil, that's material cost, and cost for labour. Then, from the crude oil, you get three joint products, gasoline, kerosene, and fuel oil. And then, you can further process those to get, for example, unleaded fuel for cars, jet fuel for aircraft, and diesel for vehicles. So, we've now got to allocate the joint costs. We can do it in a number of ways. We can take sales value, and if we do that, we can then look at the market value at the point of separation, or the net realizable value. Or we can allocate the joint cost according to some physical measurement. If there's a common unit for measurement, that's one way of doing it. Otherwise, you may find it's a weighting, which is by an estimating basis. So, magic mixtures produce an organic material, and they use the open greening process, and they then manage to distill their product to produce eco-clean for cars, carbon lock for building materials and back for growth which can become a liquid fertilizer. So the initial distillation of their organic material is the joint process. So here we've got some costs for magic mixtures including the sales value after the processing and the sales value at the separation point, the costs involved after separation and the costs up to the point of separation. We're going to start by saying, what's the profit using the sales value at the separation point? Okay, we'll take the market value at the point of separation, which is 36,000 to eco clean, and the sales value at the, se sorry, the se uh, at the separation point, which is 16,000. So we're going to apportion the cost according to a ratio, and the ratio is determined by the cost to the point of separation, over the sales value at the point of separation. So the total sales value at the point of separation was 37,000. The costs, total cost to the point of separation of 20,000. We multiply that by 100 and we get 54%. So we're going to take 54% of the sales value at the point of separation. So for EcoClean, that's 54% of 16,000 to give 8649. And we can see that it's 8649 for EcoClean, 54% of 9000 is 4875 for the carbon lock, 
54% of the 12,000 sales value at separation point for back to grow is 6486 and that gives us a total of our 20,000 for our joint costs which we've now allocated between the three. I can then add the costs after separation so I add 10,000 to each of three and give me a total cost of 18,649. I can do the same for the other two products, Carbon Lock and Vacto Grow. And then if I take those total costs from the sales value after processing, that gives me the profit that I've made. 17.531 for Eco Clean, 5135 for Carbon Lock, 5514 for Vacto Grow, a total of £28,000 profit. Okay, what about the profit using the net realizable value? Starting off with the same sort of figures, we can use the sales value after processing, the sales value after separation point, the cost after separation, and we have the total of the cost to the point of separation. So the net realizable value, this means I look at the cost after separation, and I look at the sales value after processing. If I take the costs after separation away from the sales value after processing, I've got the net realizable value. Do the same for carbon block and do the same for factory growth. So my net realizable value total is 48,000. So I'm going to take my joint costs, I'm going to apportion these according to net realizable value, which means I'll take the cost of the point separation, multiply by 100, divide by the net realizable value. That's 20,000 over 48,000 times 100, which is 42%. <coughs> so for EcoClean, I'm looking at 42% of 26,000, which is 10,833. And if I look at the others, then I'm going to get 4167 for carbon block and 5000 for back to grow. If I add those up, I will then get a total of joint costs. I've allocated my joint costs according to net realizable value between my three products. The profit is then calculated. Right. Calculate the profit using physical methods. We can use the number of units produced, and we could also use a weighted average. We'll take the number of units produced, where we have an output in tons. So we have 5,000 tons of eco clean, 4,800 of carbon lock, 3,000 of factor grow. So we've got 549, 12,800 tons. we are and our joint costs of course before separation are 20,000. So I'm going to take the total cost of the point of separation at 20,000 divide by my number of tons that's my units which is 12,800 and I get to get a cost of 1.5625 per unit. So for eco clean to apportion the cost I'm going to multiply 5,000 times 1.5625 which will give me 7813 for carbon lock it will give me 7,500, for back to grow 4688, I'm going to add up to our 28,000 joint costs. I take the costs up, separation, add those to the joint costs to get my total costs. I subtract the total costs from the sales value after processing and I have my profit, 18,188 for my eco and so on. Note that I get my 28,000 total profit again. Finally, using weighted units. With weighted units, we need a cost per weighted units, and then we can apportion the cost per unit. So for my weighted units, if I have an output, let's take eco clean, of 5,000 and a weighting of 5, then 5 times 5,000 gives 25,000. So I have 25,000 weighted units for eco clean, 14,400 for the carbon lock, and so on, a total of 45,400. I multiply the units then by the weighting to get my weighted units. So to apportion the cost, I take the cost before separation, divide by the total weighted units, and I will have the cost per unit, which comes to 0.44 ents. So for EcoClean, my cost is going to be the weighted units times 0.44, which will be my 25,000 weighted units for EcoClean times 0.44, which will give me 11,013. Right, I take my weighted units and 
there we are, I calculate my joint cost. Add the costs after separation, I get my total costs. Subtract my total costs from the sales value after processing, and I get the profit, 28,000. So note that whichever method you use, the total profit is going to remain the same. All we're looking at is the distribution of the profit between the products. That's what changes according to the method that you use. One final thing here is that we can sometimes have byproducts and we treat those slightly different for costing. If the byproducts are low market value compared to the other joint products, then we treat it differently. We can either sell it in its state immediately after separation or it can be further processed. And depending on what we do, we don't charge the pre-separation charges to the byproducts. We either credit the process account or we credit the profit and loss account. So Lunar Mining has four products, A, B, C and D. If we look at how much is produced in the selling price per ton, I, you can see 200 uh, tons of A at a selling price of 85 and so on. And we've got pre-joint separation costs of 15,000. So let's look at how much we would expect to get from these. And we can see that for product D, we only expect to have a sales revenue of 400 pounds, which is minuscule in compared to the others. So we're going to treat product D as a byproduct. That means I'm going to take my joint costs and I'm going to allocate them to A, B and C and I'm going to do it on the basis of tons produced. So, first of all I note that if I'm going to sell D as a byproduct, which is for £400, I will have to reduce the pre-separation charges by that amount, which will mean my pre-separation charges are 14600 That's the amount that I am going to allocate between A, B and C at a rate of £5.40 per tonne. And when I do that, I then have joint costs for A of 1079 for B of 13489 for C of 32 still giving me a total of 14600 which was the cost I wanted to allocate. That ends our podcast, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors, narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. For more information, look up parkbenchtutors.com. If you want access to the playlist of all our videos, you can also sign up using Moodle, get access to Moodle, and you will also find we can give you access to other resources in that way.